ट So it is very important that I hope you have already watched the part one. So part one of futures and options first you have to watch compulsorily. Only then you are eligible for this. Okay. So I hope you have watched it. Once you are done with this, one with that uh, session on YouTube, then you can watch this and you will be done thoroughly with the derivatives part. Let me know in the next uh, chapter to be done. Do I can share? with your friends and colleagues let the game of the black scolds method begin please open your magic book i will also require your icai module both of them and let's solve it let's start Okay then, so Black and Scholes model. The reason we have to do this question uh, concept now is because it can be asked in the examination, right? So, chal. Now I am going to start full focus because this is something that, frankly speaking, nobody does. So I am sure all those who are watching have not done it. But now time to do it with me, paper, pen, and your focus. now how do you derive the value of call option what is the concept that you are going to use here so we are going to start with something called as black and scolds model black and scolds were two people who were awarded with the nobel prize and they were awarded the nobel prize for making this model <laughs> what is this model this model tells us how to calculate the premium how to calculate the premium so here they will teach you how to calculate value of call option the first thing that they do is they start with the basics when will the call option have value suppose this is the exercise price you want the market to go up or you want the market to go down the obvious answer is you want the market to go up right so suppose if this is the hello pay attention suppose if this is the spot price you want the uh, exercise price you want the market to go up the difference will be your gain so this is the market price this is the exercise price you want the market price to be higher than the exercise price and that is where the whole concept start so minus ep what is so so is uh Uh, spot price or the market price see here this is where it starts now all you have to do is just pay attention and we'll be able to tackle it very much easily so so minus ep is where we start then from this exercise price we will want the exercise price to be come at our spot price so that we can take an informed decision so exercise price bring it at the present value so now our improvised version of the formula will become so minus ep upon e raised to rt okay are you aware of this e raised to an rt and everything right just to give you a context of all the formulas guys just to give you a context of all the formulas i hope you are clear with the theoretical future value formulas in that there is one simple interest then there is compounding interest and then there is continuous compounding correct of them one is simple interest without dividend what is the formula s into 1 plus rt then with dividend absolute dividend absolute dividend was S into one plus R T minus dividend. Then, then was dividend E. What was that? S into one plus R minus D. 
into T. Right? Then you add the continuous compounding. So, 1 S 1 plus R raised to T. Then S into 1 plus R minus D raised to T. Minus D. S into 1 plus R minus D raised to T. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. My mistake. My mistake. I got it. So, this will be directly 1 plus R raised to T. Minus D. And then 1 plus R minus D raised to T. See, I made it for you. Then continuous compounding. S into E raised to RT. S into E raised to RT minus D. S into E raised to R minus D into T. Yes. Now we are coming to Black and Scholes. So here, this is where we use the formula of Black and Scholes. Uh, where we use the E raised to R T. Continuous compounding to bring it the exercise price at the present value. This is what? Value of call option. Value of call option. Done. Now, here they are saying that this uh, spot price which we can see here and this exercise price that we can see here will be multiplied by the normal distribution and that's what our working now will include. It will be having the normal distribution. See here normal distribution table z table to know about the probability we have the probability right so what will be the probability that this spot is going to be there what will be the probability that this exercise price is going to be there so that is where we need the this is where we need the value of call option so value of call option is equal to spot into how do you calculate the probability here? It is ND1 minus exercise price upon E raised to RT into ND2. Done? So, this is how you calculate the value of call option. Come on. Everybody, using the Black and Scholes method, how do you calculate the value of call option? It is, see, we want the spot price to be more than the exercise price. So, S O minus exercise price. S O minus exercise price. Okay, done sir. What is this S O minus exercise price upon E raised to R T to bring it to the present value? Then the probability. So S O into N D1. S O into N D1 for probability. What is the probability that it will be this? SO price. What is SO and everything I will explain. Don't worry. Then exercise price upon E raised to RT into N D2 into N D2. Got it everybody? Done. Now how do you calculate this? D1. So D1 is equal to natural log LN. What is natural log? Yes, yes. You will get the explanation. Don't worry. Natural log of spot upon exercise price plus we are calculating this huh? D1 plus R plus variance upon 2 into T. Got it? All of this the whole upon variance into root of Variance into root of T. Got it? What is this ND1 normal distribution? So, whatever D1 we get, then we will do ND1, which will be normal distribution table. This will be normal distribution table. You used to calculate like this. This is what will be done. Got it? So, this is what it is all about the black and scores. Then D2 is going to be a residual formula. D1 minus root T. Then D2. Sorry. Yeah. 
d2 is equal to d1 minus yeah sigma root t sigma root t so this is your d1 this is your d2 so now so what is so let's start writing each of the terms that we have just studied now so is the current market price spot price so is the market price or what we call as the spot price spot price then we have ep ep is the exercise price it is the exercise price then after ep uh yeah then then we have n normal distribution d1 probability so n is normal distribution d is the probability which is there then we have ln this is called as the natural log i will explain don't worry okay then you have r r is the rate of interest then you have sigma or which is called as the standard deviation standard deviation then you have t which is the time period done so all of this is here n d1 d2 rf risk free rate rf is your risk free rate ln is natural log i'll explain t is number of years standard deviation e raised to rt is the continuous compounding now how do you calculate if e raised to 0.12 is given and the reverse of this is called as natural log see here this will give you this will give you this which is this give you this got it got it done so now we have e raised to 0.12 e raised to 0.12 how do you solve this so 0.12 take the raised to power so 0.12 is there so 0.12 then divide by 4096 plus 1 then multiply equal to 12 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 then minus 1 and we will get the answer 0.1275 and that's what e raised to 0.12 is so whatever say if, if it was e raised to 0.15 so 0.15 divide by 4096 plus 1 multiple equal to 12 times minus 1 and you will get your answer the opposite is the natural log the opposite is the natural log ln which is 1.1275 how do you calculate this natural log which is 1.1275 so we will do have to root oh i think this root is missing here the thing yeah so 1.1275 we will have to do root 12 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 -1 into 4096 and we will get 0.12 got it and we will get 0.12 so natural log gives us the inverse of continuous compounding all right Sure. So that's about it. It's more of mathematical thing. Can't be getting into much of detail, but that's what it is. Cool. So now we are going to start a sum, a very very classic sum on Black and Scholes method, which will solve all your issues. All you have to do is just solve this sum before the examination, and if any question comes on Black and Scholes. you will be able to manage it just first i'll take you through this whole thing are we now clear so into nd1 minus exercise price upon e raised to rt into nd2 right then uh, we have this d1 we have d2 we have all the so d1 d2 all of this is also now explained now finally we have if there is dividend income in bsa method then value of call option is all you have to do is just remove this dividend from here so so minus dividend upon e raised to rt everything else remains same and then there is a concept called as put call parity so 
if you have now calculated value of call option using black and shoals model and now you want to also calculate the value of put option you can do that how so value of put option will be exercise price upon e raised to rt minus so this is given this is given value of call option we can calculate from above we will be able to calculate the value of put option this is called as put call parity which says value of put plus spot is equal to exercise price plus value of call option just arrange it mathematically and you will get the put call parity now the dividend income example the put call parity example the uh, main example of black and shoals method each and everything is now what i am going to teach you through this tic limited sum of module tic limited sum of module so now i will open this tic module limited sum which will have the dividend concept which will have the put call parity concept which will have the main concept of valuation of call option which i will now call as the master sum which now i will call as the master sum okay to so, chalo now which sum is this i will tell you all wait so open your module and it will be page 9.26 page 9.26 of your module and here it is the master sum on black and shoals and put call parity and everything we will do it very very thoroughly very very thoroughly we will do it okay are we all ready please open this yes so finally we start the last leg of this session and that is solving of sums related to black scolds real options and all of that the things that are recently newly introduced by icai so i will first read the question and then we will start the shares of tic limited are currently priced at 415 guys in my formula tell me what does this 415 denote can i say currently priced means it denotes so please confirm can i say it denotes so okay and call exercise call option exercisable in 3 months time at exercise rate of 400 in a 3 months time risk free interest rate is 5% and standard deviation volatility of share price is 22% Twenty-two percent. Based on the assumption that LIC Limited is not going to declare any dividend over the next three months, is the option worth buying for twenty-five? So first, we will have to calculate the option value using the Black and Scholes method. Now, how do you come to know that this is a Black and Scholes method question? Because they, in other binomial method, and all of those method, standard deviation of share price will not be given. if standard deviation of share price is given it is definitely a, a thing that yes it is going to be based on black scolds method first we will start with the formulas and then we will solve the question on bsm black scolds method black scolds method okay okay what's the formula value of call option is so minus ep the reason i'm telling this time and again is that it sets in your head so minus ep upon e raised to rt so into nd1 minus ep upon e raised to rt into nd2 okay what is d1 it is natural log of so upon ep plus rf plus standard deviation oh sorry variance upon 2 into t the whole upon sigma root t 
then what is d2 okay d2 will be 1 minus sorry uh, d1 minus sigma root t that will be d2 Chalo. now shall we start guys okay now if we have observed in the question then a lot of things are already given let's quickly just write that down let's quickly just write that down okay like s o is given e p is given uh, 415 400 so 415 400 okay then risk free interest rate 5% standard deviation 22% Then yeah, sufficient information is there. T three months. Shall now we will have to solve this question. done okay so the preliminary information that they have given we have written now we will have calculate the d1 using the formula so we already have the formula written for us so d1 is equal to Natural log of SO upon EP, SO 415, EP 400 plus risk free rate is given as 0 0.05. See, if you have observed my uh, magic book, then I have very clearly specified one thing, should have observed that, and which is this. See here, risk free rate write in decimals standard deviation write in decimals so you have to follow that so this plus standard deviation is given as 22 percent write in decimals 0.22 square upon 2 whole into t 3 by 12 upon 0.22 root of 3 by 12 all right Chalo. now let's solve this tell me when you solve this what will happen so natural log of 415 divided by 400 so 1.0375 so we will write here d1 is equal to ln so ln 415 divided by 400 is how much it is 1.0375 so ln 1.0375 guys now your calculation should be absolutely quick huh let me tell you should be very very quick Chalo. now point point two two square point two two into is equal to divide by 2 plus 0 0.05 into 3 by 12 it is working out to 0 0.01855 0 0.01855 upon 0 0.25 root into 0 0.22 so this is 0 0.11 okay guys Therefore, D1 is equal to, now ln 1.0375, how do you calculate ln 1.0375? So, here it is, 
root of 1.0375 root of this 12 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 minus 1 into 4096 and this is 0 0.30681 all I have done is just solve this using this thing given in the magic book 0 0.03681 Point zero three six eight one plus point zero one eight five five upon point one one. This will be equal to point zero three six eight one plus point zero one eight five five divided by point one one. So it will be point five zero three two seven. Five zero three two seven. Okay. So finally we have our D one, which is point. Five zero three two seven, and now we will have a D two, which is D one minus sigma root t. D one is point five zero three two seven minus sigma root t is zero point one one. Therefore, D two is equal to Point five zero three two seven minus point one one point three nine three two seven. Now we have a D two, we have a D one. Now we have to do the interpolation of this. Okay, <laughs> the real game is left. So now N D one N D one. So D1 equal to point five zero three two seven five zero three two seven right Yeah, please confirm with the numbers, okay? Done. So it is 50327. Now we have to use the Z table. Everybody, now we have to use the Z table. Using interpolation. Why interpolation? I'll tell you. Chalo, first, we will use the Z table and I'll tell you. So, do you have the Z table? If not, you can download it from the ICAI website, icai.org. So, when you go to the website, let me take you. Yeah. Final Advanced Financial Management. See here. In the end, there is appendix. So click on this appendix, and here you will get this table, Z table. Cumulative distribution area under standard normal distribution. So we need for 0 0.50327, which they don't have. So in the Z table, you will find 0 0.50. In the Z table, you will find 0.5. One, we will use this. So, point five zero is how much? Can I say point six nine one five and point five one is how much? See this, see this. Point five zero 
and then 0 0.51, 0 0.50, 0 0.51. So 6915, 6950. So 0 0.6915, 0 0.6950. Done? Now let's solve this. Now using interpolation here. using interpolation. Let's start. So, for 0 0.50, 0 0.6915 is there. So, 0 0.6915 is there. Plus, now, between this, we will have to find out. So, we will say that. Now, pay attention very carefully. Between 0 0.50 and 0 0.51. So, between this 0 0.01, there is a difference of 0 0.0035. Right? It is 0 0.0035 for 0 0.01. So, we want how much? So, if for 0 0.01 it is 0 0.0035. So, for we need 0 0.50327. So, for 0 0.00327, it will be how much? Got it, guys? So, it will be 0 0.0035 multiplied by 0 0.00327 divided by 0 0.01 which is point triple zero double one double four five just to confirm with the numbers once everybody uh, one how much it is coming there point double zero double one double four five see there could be a rounding of errors guys if you are doing it if it is you can tell me if not i'll go ahead with what is there so, point double zero, double one, double four, five. So, this works out to how much? Finally, ND1 at 0 0.5327 works out to 0 0.6915 plus 0 0.01445. And this works out to 0 0.6926445. Got it? And then there is ND2, which is 0 0.39327. Three so let's solve for this in the same way. Z table. Again, you will have just 0 0.39 and 0 0.40, 0 0.39, 0 0.6517 and 0 0.40, 0 0.6554. So, 0 0.6517, 0 0.40. What is 0.39? 0.6554. 0 0.6517 0 0.6517 0 0.6514 Sure. Let's solve this in the same way. So we will say 0 0.6517 plus. So 
so for point zero one the difference is so this is point double zero two seven so for point zero one it is point double zero two seven so for point zero zero three two seven cross multiply it will be point uh, triple zero eight nine uh, uh, uh. please confirm Mm, this will be point triple zero eight nine and see rounding of errors will be there so that's pretty fine when you add this so you will get point six five two six and six nine two six so n d one n d two n d one is how much point six nine two six four four five so point six nine two six and N D two is point six five two six. Now let's solve the pending part. Value of call option will be hmm, come on, tell me. Solve and tell me. How much will this come? So four one five which is the spot multiply by point six nine two six minus four hundred upon e raise two. Now e raise two this will be look at the question point zero five per annum for three months. So it will become 0 0.05 into 3 by 12, which is 0 0.25. This is 3 by 12 into 3 by 12 into ND2.6526. Right? So let's solve this. Okay, what is this point zero five into point two five? It is point one zero two five. Uh, do we have point one zero two five? Yes, it is one point one zero two seven eighty. By the way, ln of one point zero three seven five was given, but we calculated on our own, huh? I'm just telling you. Now e raised to point zero one two five one point zero one two five seven eight. So finally, it will be four one five into point six nine two six. So two eighty seven point four two nine. Minus four hundred into point six five two six. 261.04 upon this will become given in the question 
And finally, we will have two eighty seven point four three minus two fifty seven point eight twenty nine point six three. So, can I say this is the correct value of option? Am I solving on my own, or you were also there with me? Yes, you were there with me because you also got the same answer. Again, just using interpolation, then applying the formula. All of the things are already given in the book, already given there. So I think just we applied the formula and we were able to get it. Acha? Done. So finally, we will say therefore, correct value of option is twenty nine point six. Value of option as per market twenty five. Therefore, we can say that value of option is undervalued. So we will say since value of option as per market. is less than correct value it is undervalued and hence should be bought it is undervalued and hence should be bought got it what a fantastic question But it is not yet over, <laughs> as they say. Picture abhi baaki hai, my dost. Second part of the question. So this is a revision session, so I will have to back up. Okay, guys. If you want, you can listen the whole session again. It will all be okay. Second part. What is the second part? Calculate the value of aforesaid call option on Black and Scholes valuation model if the current price is considered as three eighty. So can I say this part you will be able to solve by yourself now with good amount of understanding that we have. So now you have to take S zero as three eighty and solve the question. You also have the solution given in the book. So now all you have to do is just find out S zero S three eighty and solve the question. Next third part. Hmm. What would be the worth of put option if current price is considered as rupees three eighty? Do you remember I had told you all put call parity and this is what we will apply here. So first, in the second part, from the second part, we will get the value of call option. We have the SO, we have the EP upon E raised to RT. When you solve this, you will get the answer. See here, I'll show you. The third part, yeah. Just apply that. We'll solve it. Come. So third part, as per put call parity. As per put call parity, what will happen? Value of put is equal to uh, exercise price plus value of call option minus spot. What is the exercise price? I think it is given as four one five. Sorry. 
sorry, excise price is 400, E raised to RT is 1.01, 2578 which we have already calculated so 400 divided by e raised to 0 0.05 into 0 0.25 equal to 400 upon 1.012578 plus value of call option that we will get from here is 10.52 minus spot is 380 so finally we will get the answer tell me how much it is 400 divided by 1.02578 plus 10.52 minus 380 and the answer is 20.47 oh, it is something else as per them let me check so 380 is the spot 380 is the spot then 10.52 is the value of call. 10.52 is the value of call. This is So, calculation error, 25.55. Hey, Sanjay Guru. Chalo. Done, guys. So, with this, the third part of the question is also, also completed. And now, we go to the last part of the question, the fourth part of the question. Okay. And that is based on the dividend part. So, if share price at present is taken as 408 and dividend of 10 is expected to be paid in 2 months time, calculate the value of call option. So, your dividend is to be paid. So, in this case, what will be the formula? I have already told you all that if dividend is there then from the spot that much dividend will be reduced so it will become so minus dividend upon e raised to rt okay what is so what is so bolo bolo tell tell 408 so it is 408 minus what is the dividend ten so we will write here ten upon e raised to rt okay r is 0 0.05 and two months time so 0 0.05 into 2 by So, 408 minus 10 upon E raised to 0 0.00833. This is given as 1.0084. So, 408 minus 10 upon 1.0084. Just solve this. Three ninety eight point zero A. Gotcha, everybody. Done, 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 done. So with this, we complete the black and scrolls.
सिंपल वैरायटी पुट कॉल पैरिटी डिविडेंड इन द क्वेश्चन यस ऑल ऑफ द ऑप्शन डन डन सो ब्लैक स्कोल्स टेंशन डन अभी नाउ क्लियर so can i say if this comes in exam we'll be able to solve it let me know okay after this now we move on to the next aspect and that is real options so remember what we have done so far are the financial options now we are going to start with the real options so two things are there one is a financial option and the other is the real option okay yeah so financial option something that we have been doing very regularly the whole session of derivatives is based on that so if i write down uh here what are financial options it will be shares it will be probably your bonds commodities currencies all of this currencies etc right but here in case of real options the underlying is the project so here the underlying are shares bonds commodities so we will write here underlying is shares bonds commodities currencies but in case of real option underlying is is it shares bonds commodities no that is financial option so here it is the projects correct so underlying is the projects it could be a road construction project or a building or anything of that sort so they are also now a part of options they are also now a part of options second here everything is done on the stock market the contract is fixed in case of real options it is practically not possible to keep a fixed contract because projects are of more than 1 to 2 years right so here the specific contract is fixed within 1 year there is a specific contract and specific contract and fixed here in case of real option it is based on estimated cash flows based on estimated cash flows okay then duration in case of financial option is max 1 year but here it is more than 1 more than 1 year and last most important point financial options are priced at a particular whatever rate is there but real options are valued real options are valued got it guys so that's how the real options work done done and done, done yes so you can just write down whenever you want now here in case of real options now we are starting with real options so just a basic idea we've got that they are mainly used the real options are used for the big projects like a road or a building uh, you know so on and so forth based on estimated cash flows more than one year valued at Uh, whatever is the rate going on now obviously if that is the scenario then what is going to be 
द प्रोजेक्ट स्पेसिफिक टर्म्स दिस इज वेरी इजी वी नो इट डू वी नो वॉट इज लॉन्ग वॉट इज शॉर्ट डू वी नो वॉट इज कॉल वॉट इज पुट दैट्स वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज द टर्म्स यर सो वन टर्म दैट इज यूज यर इज कॉल्ड एज लॉन्ग कॉल वॉट इज लॉन्ग कॉल राइट टू इन्वेस्ट at a future date long call right to buy what is call what is long buying right to buy buying right to buy are you understanding so this is like buying right to buy buying right to buy so this is like right to invest at future date done then long call now start using your brains four things are going to be used long short call put so if it is long call the other will be long put correct the other will be long put buying right to sell <laughs> buying right to sell so your right to invest basically means right to buy your buying right to sell Hmm. So here it will be right to sell or abandon at future date. At future date. Then long is done. So now short call, short put. Absolutely correct. So short. call selling so you are you are going to selling a right to buy so obligation correct obligation to sell a project if counter party wants to buy Hmm. Obligation to sell a project if counterparty wants to buy, and the last is short put. Yes. So, obligation. It's the other way round. To buy. if counter party wants to sell so i have sold put are you understanding try and understand guys see i have sold put so i have sold a right to sell so somebody else has the right to sell i am under an obligation to buy sold a right to sell what is this sold a right to sell obligation to buy if counter party wants to sell got it so this is how the whole concept works as regards project specific things are concerned right now as far as your exams are concerned as far as your exams are concerned see so this is just a simple thing long short call put long call long means buying call means right to buy buying a right to buy long uh, put buying a right to sell i have a right i have bought that short call selling a right to call so selling a right to call means the other person uh, selling a right to buy the other person has a right to buy 
I am under an obligation to sell. Are you understanding? That's how it works. Got it? Got it? What is written here? Got it? Please confirm. Yes? Okay. If yes, then now let me tell you that this, what we are doing is basically derivatives with cap budget, capital budgeting. With capital budgeting. Derivatives with capital budgeting. So, bifurcation, there are four type of sums which we need to do. One is module ICAI sum on Black and Scholes. Second is module ICAI sum but on growth option and it is based on long call. Okay. This is going to be solved using black scholes method. Then there is module ICAI sum. This is on abandonment option. This is based on long short. But the concept to be used here is binomial. Remember. And finally, we have to solve a sum. Again, a module ICAI sum, but on timing option. It's a pretty easy question. And this is also binomial. Okay, please write this down. Please write this down. This will be very useful during revision. Please write this down. Yes. Now, the sum solving part we will do and we will be done with derivatives with full revision. Yes. So, let's start now. As usual, the ICI module is already open. So, we just have to pick up the next question and we have to solve it. So, illustration number four probably is what will be in line. Here it is. Yes. Let's start. ABC is a pharmaceutical company possessing a patent drug called Idrex, a medicine for AIDS patient. Being an approach drug, ABC holds the right of production of drug and its marketing. The period of patent is 15 years after which other pharmaceutical company produce the drug with same formula. It is estimated that the company shall require to incur $12.5 million for the, the development and marketing of the drug. As per a survey conducted, the expected present value of cash flows from the sale of drug during the 15 years shall be $16.7 million. Cash flows from the previous similar type of drug have exhibited a variance of 26.8 of the present value of the cash flows. The current yield on bonds of similar duration is 7.8%. Determine the value of the patent. Given information is as here. Chal, let's start guys with the solution. But before that, we should write down all the information that is given. So, we will 
do it step by step. First thing, so the period of the patent is 15 years. So we come to know that this is a real option. Okay. Hmm. Okay, what is the market value? See, now in case of shares, it is very easy because the market price is given as say 400 rupees, 500 as was the case in the last question. Here, if we see the, what is there? The present value of the cash flows from sale of drug is 16.7 million dollars. So, that, hmm. yeah, so that will become your SO. Question 4, ABC Limited, it is a question on growth option. Let's write down the first initial things that we know and then we will keep on solving it. Hmm. So, 16.7 million dollars. Question 4 from ICAI Matthew. Page 9.3. Okay. What is uh, the SO here? So, present value of cash flows is given. So, present value of cash flows. Basically, the Spot price is dollar sixteen point seven million. Done. Then second is we need the exercise price. Do we have that? The answer is yes. If you observe this, see it is estimated that the company shall be required to incur dollar twelve point five million for development and market of the drug. Now see, this is real option. This is like a project. Project. What does exercise price say? Exercise price tells the amount that we are required to pay, right? If I have freezed the exercise price of 1000, I am required to pay 1000. That is my exercise price. If the market goes to 1200, I have a right to buy at 1000. Market goes to 1200. I will sell it at 1200. 200 is my profit. So that is the price that I am required to pay, right? So here also they are required to pay how much? Company shall be required to pay dollar twelve point five million exercise price. That becomes your exercise price EP dollar twelve point five million. Done. Then what else is given? Cash flows from similar type of drug exhibited a variance. The moment you see variance, BSM Black Scholes method. So, 26.8%. So, if, if I have to write it in terms of uh, point, point 0.268. Okay, then, current yield on treasury bond is 7.8%. So, RF risk free rate is 7.8%. 0.078 the next all of this is being done for 15 years so this is the preliminary information that we have preliminary information that we have we have written it we have written this. Please, you also write down quickly. Now, suppose if I have to solve this question, can I say my preliminary work is done? Black and Scholes method is to be used and my preliminary work is to be done, is done almost. So, chalo, let's start. Uh, what's the formula? We know the formula. It is now value of call is S O N D one minus exercise price E raised to R T N D two. So we know this, and, and, and we, we are pretty confident as regard this. So so we will start with D one is equal to natural log. 
एस ओ अपॉन एक्सरसाइज प्राइस प्लस आर एफ माइनस नो सॉरी वोट वी हैव टू डू प्लस सिग्मा स्क्वेर नाउ देर इज वन चेंज दैट वी विल हैव टू डू यर एंड वॉट इज दैट चेंज इज नाउ वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यूर and that is relating to this dividend sir but there is no dividend here there is a dividend here which we will have to see from a different angle because this is a obviously a real option question now i'll tell you where is that dividend see here they have said that the expected present value of cash flows from the sale of drug during the period of 15 years shall be dollar 16.7 million so this whatever dividend that we are going to get is can i say split off in 15 years so what is going to be the dividend per year so it is going to be 1 divided by 15 which is 0.0067 which is 0.667 got it so that is going to be your d sir how we understand it is value of call good good question see first value of the patent that they asked when there is variance of 26.8% so we know that uh, the black and scholes method is to be used now they have said that abc is a pharmaceutical company possessing a patent drug called idrex a patient, uh, a medicine for this being an approach drug abc limited holds the right of production of drug and its marketing see the period of patent is 15 years so obviously if the 15 years are over then we can share this patent with anybody with anybody now we are expecting the present value of cash flows from the sale of drug during the period of 15 years which shall be dollar 16.7 million cash flows have also been generated at a variance of 26.8 current treasury bill this is a risk free rate so that is okay so now here we will be selling our you can say uh our patent value of patent to the whole world after 15 years so what should be its value is what we have to determine so basically this is a cop Uh, this is a question relating to this right to invest at future date what should be the rate at which people can invest in our project okay okay so your question is sir then it should be right to sell no why right to buy because if we are planning to sell it in the future where is it hmm. we are planning to sell the value of the patent in future why is it not a you can say why is it not a right to sell i'll tell you so the logic that is being used here is that we are already holding this patent we are going to benefit from the dollar 16.7 million that we are going to earn plus we will have to incur dollar 12.5 million now we are not sure whether we should go ahead with this or not whether we should incur dollar 12.5 million uh whether we if we get dollar 16.7 million whether it is beneficial to us or not all of that is now to be calculated by us so that is why it is called as it is to be interpreted as whether we should invest in this patent or not and therefore it is a right to call i mean value of call option we have not done all of this we are expected so we are expected to invest in this drug for a period of 15 years 
for which we will incur a dollar 12.5 million of which we can earn a dollar 16.7 million in uh, cash flows present value terms so whether we should invest or not is the question if we want to invest what is the value that we should be ready to pay and that is what we are calculating gotcha yes sir gotcha 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 okay done done now Mm, where were we? Yeah. So RF, yeah. Whenever dividend is there, it has to be reduced. So minus D. Now, when I first solved this question, it was practically impossible for anybody to judge or gauge that this is your dividend. For 15 years, which is 0 0.0667. That's how it is. So, minus D. And then everything else remains same. The typical formula. Plus sigma square upon Q into T. The whole upon sigma root T. But this D calculation we will have to show. So... I'll just copy it the next page. So, D is equal to. Uh, can you one more tell, one more time tell how 1 by 15 is dividend? Sure, sure. I'll explain that to you as well. So, this is like the dividend split over duration of project D is equal to 1 by 15 years point zero six six seven. 0 0.0667. See here. Their interpretation is this. That if we do not accept the project, then we will lose out on the 16.7 million cash flows, which is like opportunity cost to be considered as a dividend. And what is dividend? A cash inflow a cash inflow from a project or from a share, so on and so forth. Now, for a real option, the cash inflow is like the dividend. So, here the cash inflow is $16.7 million, which is to be divided in 15 years. So, every year we are getting how much? 1 divided by 15, 0 0.0067% kind of dividend for us. So, that's the reason it is interpreted as dividend cash flows that we are going to receive. So that's how the interpretation goes, right? Now, even when we are calculating SO, we will have to give the impact of dividend. See here, SO uh, minus D upon E raised to RT. So what they have done is SO upon E raised to df i'll explain you when we reach here first let's go step by step now let's solve this part okay. again so a little difficult for us to uh, get hold of this that 15 years dividend divided into 15 years so whatever is the dividend divided by 15 years gives us an idea okay that 6.67 percent is the dividend that we are receiving every year for 15 years so that's where 0 0.067 is the dividend. So, LN SO upon EP SO 16.7 dollars 12.5 plus RF what is the risk free rate 0 0.078 0 0.078 minus D 0.067 
प्लस हाफ इंटू स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन पॉइंट टू सिक्स एट एंड देन फाइनली द टी इंटू फिफ्टीन द होल अपॉन सिग्मा रूट टी सिग्मा पॉइंट टू सिक्स एट रूट फिफ्टीन सॉल्व दिस कॉमन सिक्सटीन पॉइंट सेवन डिवाइड बाय ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव सर हाउ विल वी कॉन्ट टू नो हाउ टू interpret this d directly in the exam you will not be able to even i was not able to interpret it i see yeah, directly they put something it's not pro logically possible at all don't worry yeah 1.336 plus now solve this so how do you solve this uh 0.268 divided by 2 plus टू पॉइंट वन सेवन फाइव पॉन ओके दिस इज पॉइंट टू सिक्स एट वील हैव टू डू द रूट सिग्मा रूट टी सो पॉइंट टू सिक्स एट रूट इज पॉइंट Five one eight. See, there could be calculation errors. I am also my mind is also tired. So you please keep on guiding me. Oni, are you there? Three point eight seven three. Now solve this. Ln one point three three six is point two eight nine seven. So point two eight nine seven. Plus two point one seven five upon point five one eight into three point eight seven three two point double zero six. So therefore. D one is equal to more of time consuming, yeah. One point two two nine. Okay. And d two will be d one minus two point zero zero six. So it will be one point two two nine minus two point zero six minus. So it is in minus one point two two nine minus two point zero six minus point triple seven will be d. D one, okay. Correct. Now start the working. No options. 
चलो सो एन डी वन इज इट गिवेन इन द क्वेश्चन लेट्स होप इट इज नो इट इज नॉट सो वील हैव टू सॉल्व इट एन डी वन So one point two three one five. Okay, they have get taken it directly. So D one. How much? One point two two nine. So if we solve this, so it will be what? One point. So let's check. Yeah, one point two two one point two three. One point two two. One point two three. So trip eight 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 and eight nine zero seven. Eight 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 and eight nine zero seven. Eight 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 and point. Point eight nine zero seven, right? Shall we? Now we'll try to solve this. So it will be point eight 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 plus. Let's interpolate this. So one point two two and one point two three zero point zero one four point eight 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 point eight nine zero seven. So the difference is. Point zero zero one nine. So now let's start. So if for point zero one it is point zero zero one nine. So for one point two two is there, no? So one point two two nine minus one point two two. Point zero zero nine. It will be how much? So point zero zero nine into point zero one nine divided by point zero one, so it will be point zero zero one seven one. Plus point. So it will be point eight nine zero five one. And how much is their answer? It is eight nine one zero. So okay. They have just rounded off things, so that's absolutely okay. So this we have solved, and the other I am taking directly from the question. So N D one, we have solved it, and it comes to point eight nine zero five one. Directly we will take from module, and N D two also we will take from module. Point two one nine six. If if you want, you can solve it. We have almost reached. We have almost reached till here. You can solve it. No worries. Any doubts? You can ask me for sure. So this is where we have our N D one and N D two. Now we just have to solve it. Solve that value of call option, which is going to be S O upon E raised to D into T into N D one minus E P upon E raised to R T into N D two. Tell me S O is dollar sixteen point seven million upon E raised to D T E raised to D T. What is D zero point zero zero six seven into fifteen? So point zero zero six seven into fifteen is six 
16.7 upon e raised to 1.005 this is given hash e raised to 1.005 is given 0 0.367 0 0.3677 so 16.7 upon 0.3677 Correct. Okay. Now one more thing. See, this ideally is e raised to minus. Huh? I think they missed it. This is e raised to minus zero point one point zero 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 five. So here, what we will have to do? Correct. We will have to introduce this up. So sixteen point seven into e raised to minus one point zero zero five. So how did you come to know? I knew it. That it's their typing mistake. It's their typing mistake. Hmm. Into nd one point eight nine one zero. Minus exercise price upon what is the exercise price? Twelve point five upon E raised to R T. So E is I mean R T. You will have to do so that is what is the rate of interest? Point zero seven eight. Into fifteen into ND two point two nine one six point two nine one six. Again, we will take it up. So finally, it will be sixteen point seven into e raised to minus zero point one one point zero zero five zero point three six seven seven. Into point eight nine one zero minus twelve point five into point zero seven eight into fifteen one point one seven. So how much is one point one seven point three one zero four three one zero four into point two nine one six. Finally, the answer will be. Sixteen point seven into point three six seven seven into point eight nine one five point four seven minus twelve point five into point three one zero four into point two nine one six so one point one three. Who finally too much calculation? Oh. So this is two one nine six. This is two one nine six. Okay, 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 okay. My mistake. This is two one nine six. So. Point two one nine six. Point two one nine six. Point two one nine six. So twelve point five into point three one zero four into point two one nine six, and it will be point eight five two zero four a point eight five two zero five. And final answer is five point four seven minus point eight five two zero five, and it is four point six two. So the value of patent is four point six two. Done and dusted with this question. 
more of now a mathematical question but can't help it's a part of module so had to do it value of patent value of patent Okay, moving on to the next part of the question and that basically is called as the abandonment option. Abandonment means you want to sell the project, abandon the project. So, you need a right to sell the project. Let's try and understand. So, next in line is abandonment option. Which we will call as right to sell the project. Okay. The put, the long put. We will start with ICI module question 5. IPL is already in production of fertilizers. In production of fertilizer is considering a proposal of building a new plant to produce pesticides. Suppose the present value of plant is rupees 100 crore without the abandonment option. However, if market conditions for pesticide turns out to be favorable, the present value shall decrease increase by 30%. If market conditions remain sluggish they shall be reduced by 40 percent increase us decrease ds in case the company is in continuation of the project it can be disposed of for rupees 80 crores if risk free rate 8 percent then what will be the value of abandonment option Chal, let's start so we come to know at least that this in this question you have to use the binomial option Okay, so sure, let's start. So, what is the current price? Suppose the present value of proportional is 100 crores. So, current value is 100 crores basically. And there is upside, there is a downside. Uh, how much is the upside and how much is the downside? Let's see. 30% uh, and 40%. So, this will become 100 plus 30% which is 130 And 100 minus 40% which is 60. Yeah. Okay. Now, as soon as 130 is there, this S is there, we will be able to calculate the U. U will be US upon S which will be 1.3 R as such. Right? 130 upon 100. And then there will be D, which is DS upon S, hmm. which is uh, 60 upon 100, 0 0.6. So, U is 1.3, D is 0 0.6. All right. Chal. Next, we have to calculate the probability can i say probability is missing so can we calculate the probability 
Yes, the answer is absolutely yes. So how do we calculate the probability in the Black and Scholes method? One is the risk neutral method and the other is our formula method R minus D upon U minus D. So we can use either of it to solve. Let's see what they have taken. I think they have taken the risk neutral method. So that's absolutely okay. We may also use our own method, R minus D1. Will give us the same answer. So, P is equal to R minus D upon U minus D. R, how much is the R? So, let's see. So, given, I think, yeah, R is, 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 is 8% and, uh, 1.08 so r will be basically 1.08 minus 0 0.6 upon u 1.3 minus 0 0.6 so this will be 1.08 minus 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.7 and it is 0 0.686 so this will be 0 0.686 so probability 0 0.686, 1 minus probability will be 0 0.314, 0 0.314, right? So now value of option. Yes, you can solve this using risk neutral probability approach also. Not a problem, we'll get it. Now, value of call option. So, value of call option is CU into P plus CD into 1 minus P upon R. So, okay. So, because this is right to sell. So, since... This is abandonment option. We will use CD that is put option right to sell. So we want the market to go down. The market goes up we will reject. So, CU will be 0 into P plus we want the market to go down and it has gone down by uh, so by 40. Just a moment. Huh? Yeah. It can be disposed of at rupees 80 crores. In case the company is not interested. Oh. See what is given here. In case the company is not interested in continuation of the project, it can be disposed of for rupees 80 crores. So, we have a right to sell at rupees 80. So, exercise price is 80. So, 80 minus 60 will be 20 into 0.314. Upon 1.08, which is this. So, 20 into 0.314 divided by 1.08 will give you 5.81 crores. This is the value of abandonment option. So, remember, uh, I when I first saw this, I skipped reading this exercise price 80, but it is there, very much prevalent. See here. It can be disposed of for rupees 80 crores. It can be disposed of if the company is not interested in continuation of the project. It can be disposed of for rupees 80 crores. <sighs> Done. So that is your exercise price. This is like your exercise price.
Got it? And now we come to the last question of the day. Yes, now we come to the last question of the day. And that is based on timing option. Let's start. Okay. Question six based on timing option. Okay. So sure. let's start. Suppose MIS is considering installation of a solar electricity generating plant to light the staff quarters. Plant shall cost rupees 2.5 crores, lead to a saving in electricity by 21 lakh per year forever. Oh. However, with the change in government, rate of electricity is subject to change. The, accordingly, the saving in electricity can be 12 lakh or 35 lakh per year and forever. Assuming WACC. Weighted average cost of capital of MIS is 10% and risk-free rate of return is 8%. Decide whether MIS should accept the project or wait and see. Okay, Chalo, let's start. See here. Now, they are planning to install solar electricity plant, the cost of which is 2.5 crores. But it will lead to a saving of 21 lakh per year. Per year. Huh? Now, 21 lakh per year forever. So, what is the cost of capital here? Weighted average cost of capital is 10%. We will come to know the present value of cash inflows forever will become 21 lakh divided by 10%. See, ideally it is cash inflow divided by the discounting factor. Cash inflow divided by the discounting factor. But if it is infinite, cash inflow upon the discounting factor matter close. Am I right? This is your basics which you should know of capital budgeting. So, if project accepted today, project accepted today, so let's see what will happen. We will have to first calculate the present value of cash inflows, which will be. 21 lakhs divide by say 10 percent which will equal to 210 lakhs less cash outflow 250 lakhs 2.5 crores is nothing but 250 lakhs giving us a net present value of negative 40 lakhs. So, we will reject. So, if it is to be accepted today, we will say negative NPV, reject the project. Am I right? Again, I am telling you, you should know this much that present value of cash inflow if the inflow is forever then it will be cash flows upon the discounting factor if you want i can just dictate it for you note if cash flows are forever then present value of cash flows is equal to Cash flow upon discounting factor. Got it? Done? First part is done. Next. Future, if with the change in government, the rate of electricity is subject to change and the electricity saving can be 12 lakh or 35 lakh per year and again forever. So, again, upside 35 lakh, downside 12 lakh, 
let's do the mathematics so future scope see 2.5 crores is the value is the cost of the project now there are two options either it can go to 35 lakh or it can go down to 12 lakh see if it goes to 35 lakh then it will be 35 lakh divided by 10 percent equal to 3.5 crores and if it is 12 lakh divide by 10 percent the value will be 1.2 crores got it now again what is the probability that we will have to wait and check so Done? Now, let's start the calculation with the calculation of probabilities, guys. So, it will be, so here we will use the risk neutral probability approach, RNPA. So, it will be spot equal to. You just have to refer the magic book for all your calculation stuffs. The expected price, upper level share price, 3.5. Am I right? Yes. Into P plus 1.2 into 1 minus P upon R, 1.08. Risk free is 8%. Now solve this. Solve this out. So, 2.5 into 1.08 is 2.7 equal to 3.5p plus 1.2 minus 1.2p. Done? So, therefore, 2.7 minus 1.2, 3.5 equal to 2.3 p therefore p is equal to 1.522 so okay this is 1.3 huh guys sorry so, 1.3p, sorry, 1.3 is equal to this. So, p is equal to 1.3 divided by 2.3 and it is 0.565. 1 minus p is equal to 1 minus 0.565. So, it will be 0 0.435. Got oh, you are saying some calculation mistake. What is it? Can you tell me? So, 2.7 minus 1.2 is 1.5. You have written 1.3. Okay. So, 2.3 divided by 1.5. 1. 0.5 divided by 2.3. 0. 0.652. Okay. Minus 1. So, this will be 0 0.348. 0 0.348. Done. So, finally, we can calculate the expected payoff. So, I hope you have watched the futures options video wherein I have taught the binomial in detail. That is the reason we are able to solve this so easily, smoothly and quickly. So, at 2.5 crores. Let's draw the binomial 0 0.652 
पॉइंट थ्री फोर एट दिस इज थ्री पॉइंट फाइव क्रोर दिस इज वन पॉइंट टू क्रोर सो सो वैल्यू ऑफ ऑप्शन विल बी एट दिस द पे ऑफ इज वन क्रोर हाउ थ्री पॉइंट फाइव माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव बट योर इट इज नेगेटिव सो वन क्रोर इन टू पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव टू प्लस जीरो प्लस जीरो बट योर हाउ मच नेगेटिव इट इज माइनस वन पॉइंट थ्री क्रोर सो माइनस वन पॉइंट थ्री इन टू पॉइंट थ्री फोर एट So how much is the probability? Point six five two and point four five two. So point six five two minus point four five two four. This is. माइनस पॉइंट वन डबल नाइन सिक्स सॉरी प्लस अगेन क्रोर्स नाउ डिवाइड बाय वन पॉइंट जीरो एट सो पॉइंट वन डबल नाइन सिक्स डिवाइड बाय वन पॉइंट जीरो एट इक्वल टू एंड इट इज पॉइंट वन एट फोर एट Crores multiply this by huh, one crore, and it will become eighteen forty eight one forty eight. So we can see that the NPV is positive, and therefore we accept the project. <laughs> now you will have a question sir why did we take this as in sorry why did we take this because it is negative so ideally we should have left it at zero yes in case of these shares and stocks we would have done that but here since the net present value is there so we will have to consider the downside as well all right guys so please pay attention to that in case it is a real option question we will take care of the downside as well here it is see we will take care of the downsides as well and then bring it at the present value and with this we are done with all the questions relating to the new things which have been introduced bachcha everybody yes guys so with this we complete this session consisting of real options timing abandonment black and scolds everything done and dusted for you guys just go through this video again so that revising it you will be able to do it sir but in illustration 5 we ignored the upside taken as zero exactly so here Hmm. Here, in this case, see you'll have to understand the difference of both the questions. I'll explain you. See here, we are focused on the net present value part. In this case, see here. Hmm. With the change in government, the rate of electricity is subject to change. Savings can be twelve lakh or thirty-five lakh per year. Per year and forever, assuming weighted average cost of capital to be ten percent, risk-free rate to be eight percent. So obviously, this is not of importance to us. But here, both the options will have to be evaluated because if there is a change in government, then we may have a positive cash flow of three point five crores, 
or a cash flow of 1.2 crores this may result into a loss this will result into a profit combining both of them in terms of npv we will be using this so if it is a case of timing option wherein npv is to be calculated we will be taking where is it we will be taking the downside as well yes uh, if suppose we solve it just using the positive part which is say 1 crore into 0 0.652 0 0.6 one uh, 0.652 into 1 crore then we are ignoring the negative npv aspect which also has to be taken care of but sir why did we not take this same thing in the abandonment option here because here if there is a downside we took the downside part we took the downside part but we did not take the upside part why because this is not based on npv and hence we will consider this as a typical binomial option and we will solve it accordingly so if yeah, the net percent value part is there we will have to take both so in yeah so capital budgeting part or the npv part we will have to take both here the question says that either of the case is possible 30 percent or 40 percent yes can be confusing but if you read it again you will realize that there the npv part is there so capital budgeting npv so both the possibilities have to be taken care of but this is to be solved like a typical question based on your yeah binomial method correct sure my time for me to say hasta la vista will be sharing this on my telegram channel what next which chapter next you have to tell me that yes you decide and i will execute chalo take care guys keep smiling hasta la vista bye bye thank you so much